Welcome to Second Listen Saturday on the Parenting Roundabout Podcast, where we share some fun moments from a past episode for your weekend listening pleasure. Look for new episodes every Monday through Friday. Dun, dun, da. Mom guilt. Catherine, mm-hmm. you feeling some mom guilt there? <laughs> and what kind of mom guilt are you feeling? We need to need to fine tune this definition. That's right. So today we thought we would talk about not necessarily feeling guilty about what you haven't done for your kids, like like I don't know, make them do the math, the summer <laughs> math book that was mysteriously disappeared somewhere in the house. Ah. Um, so not feeling guilty yes. about what you haven't done, but well, of what course you we have. we do. We're just not talking about that today. Right. We're just narrowing our discussion today to <laughs> to keep things manageable. Um, but, you know, the guilt that we sometimes feel for what we have made our kids yeah. do, like mm-hmm. pushing them to do things and then think, oh, maybe I that shouldn't, about- maybe that was about <laughs> me. I don't know. Yeah. So have, have you felt like that before, Nicole? <laughs> Many times. <laughs> Sadly enough. Yes. Uh, most recently, with my daughter, my son was still, I mean, it's, he's older now, so I don't have that much influence <laughs> over his life anymore. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if I say to him, maybe you shouldn't go out and have drinks tonight because you had drinks two nights ago, <laughs> it doesn't seem to <laughs> bear any weight, but, yeah. um, Definitely with my daughter. And actually, yeah, I I definitely have, especially this past year, have really encouraged her to, to maybe extend herself in ways that she might not necessarily yeah. want to, <laughs> or it might not be natural to her. And I think, oh, that that must have been yeah. oh yeah that was about me and it's <laughs> like yeah and i mean even if she agrees with you you don't bear the social consequences that she does right right so it's like i can give my daughter a pep talk do this thing do this thing rah rah and then she goes off to do it and i'm like well this has no you know <laughs> nobody's right. going to look at me funny for this but she's going to be getting it <laughs> exactly um, and then i feel terrible and yeah and i know, and i still do need to I, I've got her, I, I'm still trying to um, uh, convince her to join the Possibilities Club at her high school next year. Yeah. And, and, and she totally <laughs> called me out on it the other day. Oh, She's like, Mom, did she? this is about you. This is not about me. <laughs> Busted. Said, but yeah, because, then I, you know, I was, I was trying to sell it to her and I'm like, you know, and then... <laughs> And but think of all the great changes you could make, yeah. <laughs> and, and think of you know some of the some of the things that you you know you could make a difference and um, maybe change some of those old ways. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, "Mom, <laughs> this is not me that's talking. This is wow. you." Wow. <laughs> well, good for her. So yeah, but she is she still out. considering it? She's still considering it. Yeah, I think she realizes the value in participating, not necessarily to make change or make waves. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we forget how hard that is when you're a teenage girl to go in and change things. Oh, yeah. Looking back, we wish we had done those things. But in the actual moment, it's hard. Yeah, mm-hmm. it it's is. hard to have an opinion and to express it when people, other people, like the way things have been going. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I and I just, I, I can't even remember if I did this as much as my son, but you know, I just, re- I do repeatedly find myself doing, you know, saying things or asking her to do things and thinking, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> even as we resent our mothers for having done similar things to us, that's right. We still merrily, as I. As I push her out the, the door to, to go to the party that she was invited to, and she's got a bad head oh, yeah. cold, and I'm thinking, oh. don't doze up on that cold medicine. It'll be fine. Oh, go to the yes. party. It'll be fun. Oh, I have done that, too. Oh, oh yes. dear. So it's my, so bad. My stellar display of <laughs> parenting. Yeah. 
I I mean, in terms of it being about me, I I think back to my enthusiasm for my daughter to be in marching band in high school. And at the time, I felt it was completely because here is a young person with a language delay. She needs total language immersion. Where else to do that? But this group that you're with all the time, and there are kids, and they are talking. Let's do that. I had such good motives, but really, I think a large part of it was... I almost was in band in high school, but I chose choir instead. What would it have been like to be in band? Let's see, honey, go be in the band. And a couple of times she said, you know, I really don't want to do this. And I'm like, of course you do. It'll be great. Go on, take that trombone, lug that out there. Yes. And I well, look back at that. it's hard because sometimes they, they need the push. They do. And it's very hard to know. Where yes. to where to stop with yeah. the push. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel sometimes with my kids, because they don't necessarily express themselves and what they want well. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like if I do nothing, nothing will happen. And that's not good either. Yeah. So I kind of mm-hmm. make myself the cruise director. And this is what you're going to do. And it'll be great. And go here and do this. And they don't resist, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they want to do it. Mm -hmm. And then I am left with, you know, guilt and recriminations for the rest of our lives. (laughs) But uh, your kids have opinions, right? Do they, I mean, as you said, Nicole, your daughter said, hey, (laughs) she was able to call you on it. My daughter maybe can do that now at 27, but not not consistently. And my son just could not be less interested in doing that. So, but sometimes they'll just say no, but they're all, you know, they're in their twenties now when they were kids and when they were in high school, I ran the show. Is that true for you guys? Do you feel like you are the one picking things for them all the time and wondering if you're just reliving your high school and middle school years? Yeah, I mean, I think at a developmental level, no, when they were (laughs) were much younger. Well, yeah, but I mean, I... I was never like an athlete in any way. And, um, and my daughter's biggest, you know, activity is skating. And so on the one hand, you know, I don't, I don't know anything about it. Like I was never in a sport. I don't know that much about the experience of competition, that kind of thing. Like Mm -hmm. it's just not, it's just not my, my experience. Um, So, uh, but at the same time, I'll be like, you know, yeah, you should take that test. You know, she'll, (laughs) she'll insist that she's not ready to take a skating test. Yes, you are. And then, (laughs) you know, sometimes there's like a three-way argument between me, her, and the coach and, and everyone has a different opinion (laughs) and that's not good either. And yeah. yeah. And then sometimes when it's over, I'm like, why am I like, (laughs) what difference does it make if she takes this test now? I don't like, why do I care? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's hard. And there's so many opportunities to screw up. I know when my kids were, you know, younger, they were definitely, I was definitely much more involved I was definitely mm-hmm. their cruise ship <laughs> activities <laughs> organizer. <laughs> but yeah, as as of late, my daughter is becoming a lot more um, outspoken with me yeah. in particular. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's good, even though it yeah. doesn't feel good when she does it in general. <laughs> Can you step back and say it's good that she has her own personality and her own... Yeah, sometimes I, I, I definitely I'll step back and go, oh, wow, okay, yeah, I admire it. And then other times I'm like, oh. <laughs> Just do what I say. Yeah. yeah, sometimes you're like, listen, I have been doing this <laughs> I know what oh, that. 25 <laughs> more years than you. So Let me like... share the benefit of my many years of experience. Can I tell you how much 27-year-olds enjoy hearing that? <laughs> my poor daughter gets it from me and from various friends of mine on Facebook. And she's just, anytime she says something, we all say the same thing. And it is so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> But I I mean, even on more profound things than just activities, I mean, I still go back and second guess my decision about, say, inclusion, which, while I support it theoretically in practice, was not good in our school district. And yet I got a full head of steam about it. And I put my daughter in that class and she's the one who had to sit there and take subpar 
educational strategizing for many, many, many years. And I think, Mm -hmm. you know, that was completely my call. She was in no place to make that call. Mm -hmm. You know, she would have been happy just staying where she was probably. Maybe not. Who can ever know? But Mm -hmm. it's such a responsibility making decisions for other people. And yet I want things my way. So it's it's so hard to weigh. I know. It's the happy medium. Yeah. When my when my daughter was deciding whether or not to um take a year off from her skating team, yeah. This this season it, it was really hard because, you know, I was very I was trying to be really careful not to make up her mind for her and not to tell her what to do. Um, But that was partly because I really didn't know what to do. I really didn't know what was the best answer. Um, And so it was really hard for both of us because I'm like, you know, she didn't want to say, tell me what to do. Yeah. And I didn't want to say, this is what you should do. Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So then both of us were kind of, stuck. <laughs> Those are really long and painful conversations when neither of you actually knows what to do, but you feel like you need to keep flogging it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, you know, and in the end, she finally, she decided not to do it. Okay. And she's so far happy with that decision. So, mm-hmm. so we'll see. Yeah. But that's why I'm like, well, that's why you're not, you're not doing the team. So take the test. <gasps> <laughs> Keep on testing. That's the whole point. Like you're supposed to be using this time to test. Yeah, but I and don't you don't know. want to be one of those parents that's living vicariously through your sport child, like you write right. about. But exactly. at the same time, yeah, do this thing. Right. right. <laughs> well, do do we think it's different um, with our daughters more so than our sons? Because we each we each have one of each. We do. So. When your son was younger and still within your power, Nicole, <laughs> did you do the same kind of thing with him or is it just different with guys? Because we don't have that specific experience. I want to say it's not necessarily a gender thing, but maybe a personality thing. That because could be. My son would do things and then not really tell me the end result. So, <laughs> <laughs> Because, you, I mean, well, maybe it is a guy thing. I don't know because, he, you know boys generally don't go into a lot of detail. So I didn't usually get a lot of feedback on how it went or what he thought about it. You know, it's (laughs) only now that I'm starting to hear some of the horror stories. Oh no, that's (laughs) the worst. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, he still enjoyed himself. I'm I'm thinking of his water polo days and how much he suffered. (laughs) Oh no. Um, And were you like pushing him to do that? Oh, yeah. I mean, here's a wonderful, wholesome sport for you to participate yeah. in, son. And here's a sport that you don't need any experience with. You just need to know how to swim. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. Oh, dear. <laughs> so so I, we really pushed him to, to do that in his freshman year. And he, it was not a pleasant time for him. But it ended up being, you know, it, the, the kids that he met and the time that he spent in it because he was in it for all four years. Mm-hmm. They're his closest friends, so yeah. I, it's like one half dozen the other, right? Like right. if we hadn't have done that, where would he have ended right. up? Um, exactly. You know, and 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 it's just now that we're starting to hear the stories, and he oh, wasn't man. telling us at the time. But um, I don't, I don't know yeah, what's worse, I don't know. like having to live each terrible thing with your child as they go through it, or finding out later. Yeah. Those are both really <laughs> awful things. <laughs> and I feel like, and I feel like too, though, personality wise, like my daughter would have no problem telling me how, <laughs> how, how horrible it is. Whereas yeah. My son, like I said, just, it tended to be a little bit more complacent about things yeah. and, and quiet. I wonder so. if maybe that is a guy thing to be more stoic know. about that sort of things. Cause it's not maybe yeah. cool to complain about. I don't know. It's hard. Hmm. So. Anyway. How about you, Catherine? Have you found that? Have you seen any difference? I, I think a little bit. I mean, with both of my kids, I'm very like, you know, once they're signed up for something and once they're committed to something, I like to make them stick it out, you know? Yes, yes. And um, I think I've had to do that more with my son than with 
my daughter. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, he today likes, you know, loves hockey and, and wants to play, but I can remember like when he was like five and, you know, (laughs) doing the little like, like introductory program and Uh he'd be fussing and fussing about going and I still made him go, and now I'm like, oh, brother, he was five. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. am I doing? <laughs> but, you know, he's still doing it now, and maybe yeah. if I didn't make him go then, he wouldn't be doing it now. And Yeah. Who knows? yeah. Well, and then you think of those sports that kids who start doing it from such a young age mm-hmm. that, you know, your son might never have had the opportunity to even get a foot in the door if he hadn't yeah. started so young. Yeah, because they're all that's true. superstars by the time they're six. But yeah, <laughs> so, mm-hmm. it's like I can't. I had to put you in that early. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> I had to choose when you were five what you were going to want to be doing in high school. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I had to determine your future when you were born. I'm sorry. That's right. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I picked the trombone for my daughter in like fourth grade because I wanted her to be able to be in the marching band. She wanted to play the violin and, and I said no to that for the band reason and also for the fact of, oh my gosh, the game violin. The violin. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. But I, I do, you know, as with everything else, I do go back and think, if she wanted to play the violin, let her play the violin. Why yeah. did I set her up that she had to, you know, from fourth grade that she was going to do this thing that I thought would be a good thing to do and maybe she didn't want to do? I mean, um, it's hard okay. marching you band. You reminded me of a terrible story. Uh-oh. Tell me. I'll feel better <laughs> to know that I'm example. not the only horrible person. <laughs> well, my son was in band and he played the trombone. Mm-hmm. And I just, you know, we, we would go to all of the, the concerts and performances. Yeah. And I would never see him. He would be at the very back of the group on the stage. And I'd just be, yeah. you know, we'd be sitting there and listening, enjoying the music. But yeah. it would just be endless hours of, yeah. So <laughs> when my daughter wanted to join band, I said, you can join band, but you need to play the flute. <laughs> So you'll be up front where I can see you. You'll be up front yeah. where I can see you and get pictures of also, you. Also, so that it's easier to transport. Yes, true. Mostly, that is very mostly true. mostly because I could see her and take photos of her. <laughs> see, <laughs> yes, I see Kristen. mine away from the flute because I, I played the flute. And there's <laughs> flutes are a dime a dozen. There's there are. so many flutes. I, so I asked the, band, the uh, music teacher in fourth grade, what is an instrument where she would have a pretty good shot of getting into band? And he oh. told me trombone. Later, I heard that this guy just liked the trombone and would tell anybody trombone who asked. So. <laughs> but it's this big, heavy thing. Yeah. Why did I saddle her with that? Yeah. It seemed like a good idea at the time. I didn't have to carry it. She didn't. There were no auditions with her band, yeah. so she yeah. could just pick up whatever instrument she wanted. But I just simply wanted to be able to take good photos of my daughter in band. It was not about <laughs> her playing flute. <laughs> so she went through... Five years of flute. <laughs> nice thing about so... sitting in the bag is you can play bad and nobody could tell. Well, but, my, uh, son, uh, <laughs> my son likes to tell me stories of how he just didn't play at all. He yeah, would just yeah. Move it back I think my, my daughter did a lot of moving the slide randomly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, we, have, we have videos of my son and his piano keyboard. Because in their elementary school, they, the kids all had to take piano keyboard um, from kin- kindergarten all the way through fifth grade. And there's definitely some piano concerts where you can see that he is so <laughs> totally faking. He is yes. just moving his little fingers on the keys and he is not pressing them down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, as a as a somebody who came back to the flute late in life to play in the community band, see, living vicariously through my child, to play mm-hmm. in the community band, I can say that you can play a flute without really playing a flute, too. <laughs> it's like there's some music I go, just going to wiggle my fingers. Yeah. But I don't like to sit on the end. I make them put me, like, in the middle. <laughs> you in far the middle. away from anybody being able to see that I am faking it, like, <sighs> at least a third of the time. So. Generously. But... Yeah. We all have our in moments. terms of yeah, in terms of gender, I I really can't tell because my kids are so different and their particular disabilities are so different. And you know, my son doesn't really communicate that much about stuff. You know, mm-hmm. he does. He goes where at least when he was little, he goes where I put him, and I never hear one way or the other. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe it's like you said, it's a guy thing, but it's also I also found out sort of terrifyingly late in his schooling that he would often say he likes something that he didn't like 
Or if somebody was mean to him, he would say he liked them, like, you Mm -hmm. know, a particular paraprofessional who I then Mm -hmm. signed him up with for another year, (laughs) when in fact, she was awful to him. So sometimes it's like, okay, is this one of those times where it's opposite day? Or is this something you really like? So if he comes home from work and he says, I love working there, I really don't know if he does or if it's like, they're terrible to me the whole late hours. I don't know. So that makes it difficult. So Mm -hmm. used Mm -hmm. to be when he was in school, through high school, I could get independent verification. You know, Mm -hmm. there was lots of people I could ask. Right. And now there are not. From college on, there have not been. So that is rough. So I don't know mm-hmm. if it's a gender thing or if it's a, a disability thing or what, but I maybe also don't push him as much because his disabilities are more visible and I feel like, you know, I, I pick things for him based on that. Whereas with my daughter, I feel like you can be in the mainstream, honey, here, <laughs> jump. <laughs> oh, you're in the water, but that's okay. Yeah. Paddle, paddle, Just paddle. swim. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> Oh, boy. I am a wash-in mom guilt, pretty much constantly. Mm -hmm. 